Hi, I'm Eric from Arn Software and in this quick shot tutorial I'm going to show you how this flow works that creates this nice radar screen effect. You see my flights coming into the airport and they turn red when they reach the inner danger area here. So let's start with the actual radar screen. Coming from this screen background I use two rectangular masks to mask out this area just using a brightness contrast tool and pulling the gain down to zero. Then we have this transform tool which scales the original cross down and gives me this nice grid pattern here. By default the transform tool is set to black which would only scale down the entire image but if you set it to wrap it will repeat the pixels so you get a grid like this. Of course you can still go into your size and change the actual size of the grid to your liking. Then I feed this image into a coordinate space tool. The coordinate space in this case is set to polar to rectangular and now I get this radar screen look. And of course it's fully flexible so you can still go back to your original rectangle masks and for example use this one to change the thickness of your circles like that or you can use this one to change the thickness of the sectors. This again goes into a brightness contrast tool and again using an ellipse mask in the middle here I take my brightness contrast to define this inner danger area where the flight numbers are supposed to turn red in the end. So this is step one. Now we need our actual radar scanner going through the image. And again coming from the same background I used for the grid, I take another brightness contrast tool and a rectangular mask. And if we have a look at the spline view, especially at the uh, Y animation of that rectangular mask, you see I have a nice looping motion here and the mask simply moving over the brightness contrast leaving me with this green streak. So again I feed this into a coordinate space tool set to polar to rectangular and that gives me my circular scanner running over the image. Of course this could have been done with just a circular mask but I wanted to have another option. So again coming from the original background I go into another brightness contrast tool again set the gain to zero and having a rectangular mask in this case going vertically and feed this into a transform tool. So instead of animating the original mask which I could have done I animated the transform tool and in this case you see if we look at the X path again I have a looped motion here on X so now my green line moves from right to left over the screen. Let's have a look at the coordinate space tool again. Using this dissolve I can actually switch between my circular motion and this motion. So now my lower setup here goes into the coordinate space tool and with the dissolve I can obviously mix between my original circular motion and this round radar motion here. I could even go to additive dissolve so I can very easily decide which part of the radar I want to use for this demo. Let's stick with the circle. I then merge the output of the coordinate space over my original grid using a merge tool set to screen and in this case with a blend of 0.5. So this is my basic setup. Now for the flight numbers coming in. For that I used Fusion's particle system and if you watch closely you see that my original animation actually starts at frame 10 and not frame 0. To create the flight numbers I use a text plus tool. In this case set to 64 by 64 pixels. The text itself is animated. If we again look at the spline view you'll see that I have 10 keyframes here which basically create those arbitrary flight numbers. Just like so. To get that white outline just go to the shading tab click on shading 2 and in this case I chose an outline for the text. This could be fully filled or an outline of the text itself but I wanted this 
complete outline around the text. So in these first 10 frames, this animated text goes into my particle emitter and the particle emitter then creates my flight numbers using the text plus as the actual particle. So we have a particle run-up of 10 frames. After those 10 frames, the number of the particle emitter is animated. So again, let's have a look at the spline view and see what's on the number tab. So for 10 frames, we have a particle number of 1. So one particle is created each frame. And at 10, 11, this goes down to 0, so no new particles are created. The style of the particle emitter is set to bitmap, in this case my text 1. And I can use the color controls to generate particles in whatever color I like them. But in this tutorial, let's stick to green. Now I want the particles to move to the center of the screen. To achieve that, I use a particle point force with the center of the force being in the center of the screen. In this case, it's a strength of 0.02. And again, this is animated. You can tell from the white underlay. So let's go to the spline view and check this. So up to frame 49 it's set to 0.02 and from frame 50 on it's set down to 0 because that's when I have the acceleration of my particles towards the center I actually want. Finally, we use a particle change style to achieve those red blinking particles here that hit the inner danger zone of our setup. The particle change style itself is animated in terms of color and the particle type is set to bitmap using the very same bitmap, the text plus, I used for the original particles. The region is set to sphere, and the sphere obviously lines up with that ellipse we created for our original radar background, defining the inner danger area. So if I merge this on top, I see my particles coming in, and when they hit the inner danger zone here, they start blinking red. Okay, back to how I merged these particles on top. You remember the coordinate space creating our original circular scanner here. I feed that into a trails tool to generate this trailed effect because those old tube monitors always have a trails effect on them. I then turn this into a bitmap mask and then use a rectangular mask to actually brighten this up. So the trick is that with this rectangle I can either decide to have only my trailed version as a mask or to add to my mask until I actually reach a full white mask. But let's step back to the value of 0.4. So this mask is now used to actually merge my particles, my flight numbers, on top of the radar screen. So the amount with which they are merged on is determined by my mask here. I then use the original trailed mask, this one, to mask off a glow. So again, where the scanner hits, the particles glow up a little bit. That's basically it. I then use a brightness contrast in this case to cache my output to disk and the last thing I have to do is to give this a circular appearance. So again, I use a brightness contrast, turn the gamma down, and use an ellipse mask to generate my radar screen look. Thanks for your time. Please remember to visit vfxpedia.com to download this composition and try it out yourself. Till the next time, bye.